Hi, Mike Hughes here, preacher for the Spring Hill Church of Christ at 405 Butler Street, Spring Hill, Louisiana with another video Bible sermon for your edification and to build you up in the most holy faith, in the Word of God, the inspired Word of God, the pillar and the ground of truth where we find our standard for living and how we are hoping to obtain heaven as our eternal home after we leave this life. If you haven't already, go to the video description and download the note card for this sermon. Go get your Bible. Open your Bible. How many of you have a Bible? I hope you have a Bible. Get a good translation. Open it up. Study with us. If you find the things that we present are from the Word of God, Make whatever changes in your life you need to make before it's everlastingly too late. If you like this message, then give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell to get notifications of when we'll add new content. And so with that in mind, let's jump into this video. On behalf of the Spring Hill Church of Christ, I thank you for downloading watching, listening to this message. I say it that way because we're different, many, many different places uh, on the internet. You can get this. Uh, Facebook and uh, YouTube come to mind, particularly. Uh, Rumble will be another place we'll be on uh, shortly. I want to begin this lesson this morning or whenever you're listening to this, I guess I should say, with three passages of Scripture. The first passage of Scripture I want to call to your mind is John chapter 3 and a very familiar verse I want to start out with, and then I, but I want to read a little more than this verse because we usually stop at this one verse. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. Now, we usually stop there, but I want to continue on to verse 21. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. Whoever believes in Him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. This is the judgment. The light has come into the world. And people love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. Then he says, For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. John chapter 3, verse 16 through 21. Now let's notice... 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14, beginning. For the love of Christ controls us, because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. 1 John chapter 4, verse 16, our last passage we want to consider by way of introduction. 1 John 4, 16 through 21. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love. Whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. By this is love perfected with us, so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment because... As he is also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, whoever loved God must also love his brother. 1 John 4, 
verse 16 through 21. Now in those passages, we saw the love of God. And we also talk, talked about Jesus' love, how we're controlled to be controlled by Jesus' love. Which brings us to this question. How do we celebrate Jesus' love? How do we understand that kind of love? And I want to consider three things. Think about this, these three things. First of all, I want to think about this. If it had not been for God expressing His love through Jesus Christ, we would not know what love is. Now, our human thinking about love, we call many things today love. For example, we call sexual pleasure love. But that love is rooted in our physical natures and desires. Secondly, we call loyalty love. That love is rooted in causes. And we call commitment that we might have for someone. We call that love. But that love is rooted in purpose, purposes. And then we call desire for things, maybe material things. We call that love, but again, that love is rooted in materialism. Now, all these things we consider love, but none of those things take into account how do we love people. We would not know how to love people if it wasn't for the fact that God through Jesus Christ teaches us how to love people. Without understanding and developing that love, we don't know how to love people. Now, Jesus teaches us a unique form of love that is reserved for loving people. Notice it's different than that those other four things that we called your attention to that we call love. This is a different kind of love. It is the form of love that God has for us. God revealed it and illustrated it in the life and death of Jesus. Now question how is this love God teaches us through Christ different? Well, it's different because it's a love that comes from the mind as well as the heart or emotions. It begins in a person's will and not his feelings. People have this love because of their will as well as their feelings. This love is unselfish, is sacrificial, treats other people as you would want to be treated, seeks the best interest of others, had rather forgive than judge, and had rather show compassion than seek justice. Humanity did not know this kind of love until Jesus lived it. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and in verse 4, he says, talks about this love. When Paul says, love is patient, kind, does not envy or boast, is not arrogant or rude, it does not insist on its own way, it is not irritable or resentful, it does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. This is the love that we're talking about that God has taught us through the life and through the death of Jesus Christ. Now secondly, this love is the love that lives in men and women who allow Jesus Christ to to live in them. 
Now, how can we look at Jesus and see this form of love? Notice there are some things that show us this in the events of Jesus' life. First of all, it is the love that the disciples, that washed the disciples' feet when the disciples were too proud to wash their own feet. We have this story in John chapter 13, verse 3 through 20. It starts out, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God, he rose up from supper, he had laid aside his outer garments, and he took a towel, he tied it to his waist, poured water in basement and began basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. Now Simon didn't understand this and he asked, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus says, what I am doing you do not understand now, but afterwards you will understand. He was demonstrating this kind of love to Simon Peter. Secondly, this love touched people who suffered from incurable leprosy when law forbid it and no one else wanted to touch them. In Luke chapter 5 and in verse 12, it says, While he was in one of the cities, there came a man full of leprosy. And when he saw Jesus, he fell on his face and begged him, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, something forbidden. He said, I will be clean. Immediately the leprosy left and he charged him. Now he still had to keep the law. The law was you go show yourself to the priest. Make your offering for cleansing for your purification and for a proof. And so now this was reported abroad. This is a love that Jesus had for this leper. Number three, it is a love that gave the living water to a Samaritan divorcee who was an outcast to her own village. And we study this in John chapter 4, verses 3 through 42. How this water was, she was dipping water from Jacob's well. And Jesus told her that he, would give her he could give her water, that she would never thirst, and she wanted this water. And after their discussion and the things he told her, she went back and told her people. He gave living water to this Samaritan divorcee. Number four, it was the love that forgave prostitutes. In Luke chapter 7, verse 36 beginning, we have the story of Jesus eating in the house of Simon the Pharisee, reclining at his table. And uh, the Bible says a woman of the city, parenthetical statement, who was a sinner. When she learned that Jesus was there, she brought a alabaster box, what we would know as a box made out of gypsum, a flask of ointment, a year's wage has been said. She stood behind him. She wiped his feet with her hair, weeping to wet his feet and touching his feet, kissing his feet. And the Pharisee, Simon, said to himself, he said, if he had known what type of woman this was, he wouldn't let her touch him. She's a sinner. Jesus answers him and says, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he answered and said, say it, teacher. And he told the story of the money lender who had two debtors that owed him money. One owed 500 denarii, the other one owed 50. They both could not pay. And he asked which one loved him more, and Simon said, well, I guess the one that, whom he canceled the larger debt. 
And Jesus said, you judge rightly. And he, then he says, this woman who you see here, she entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet. She's wet, has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but she has not ceased kissing my feet, anointing my head with oil. And he said, her sins that are many are forgiven. So that's the love Jesus showed there. And then number five, we have the love that ate and associated with people who had the earned and public reputation for being evil people and for using dishonesty and fraud, defrauding people or known as the tax collectors. And of course, they were on Jesus about that. And Jesus' answer to that was, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick do. And He tells them, go learn what it means to desire mercy and not sacrifice. He said, I came not to call the righteous, but the sinners. Then the sixth one, the type of love. It was a love that moved Jesus to feed thousands of people when He knew that most of them would misunderstood why He fed them and turn against Him. In short, it was the love that cared about people who in no way deserved His love. This love cared so deeply that it looked at people and saw men and women made in God's image even when they were filled with evil, greed, and selfishness. This love provided that it cared, it proved that it cared, and it declared itself in terms of people's eternal worth, even when they did not respond to His love. Jesus did not love people just after they responded to Him. Jesus loved people before they responded to Him. And Jesus even loved the people who refused to respond to Him. John chapter 13, verse 34 says, A new commandment I give to you, talking to His disciples, that you love one another just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this all people will know that you are My disciples if you have love for one another. Then in chapter 15, in verse 12 through 14, He said, This is My commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Show the same kind of love. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Verse 17, these things I command you so that you will love one another. So how could Jesus call the commandment to love one another a new commandment? Well, here it is. The law of Moses had commanded the Israelites to love fellow Israelites. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Leviticus 19.18 Now, why is this a new commandment? Well, because loving your neighbor as yourself never approached the form of love that Jesus had and has for His disciples. The love that Jesus had for His disciples, the love that Jesus has for us is distinctive. It is so unlike any other form of human love that any man or woman who loves others with Jesus' love is recognized as Jesus' disciple. Only when we follow Jesus can we love with the for that form of love. Only He can give us the strength to love with that form of love. That is the love that let Him die on the cross for us. That death is the greatest decoration of love that ever has been declared on the earth. That is the greatest manifestation of love that will ever be revealed on the earth. So the question comes, are you a Christian? Are you a follower of Jesus? Do people know that you belong to Jesus by the way you love other people? Now, it's a very simple thing for us to say, oh yes, I, I believe in Jesus. I believe in the resurrection. I believe that Jesus is Lord. I believe that God sent His Son. 
Do you really believe that Jesus died on the cross? Do you really believe that God raised Him from the dead? Do you really believe He and God did that for you? Do you believe it in the same way you believe that George Washington was the first president of this nation? If that's the way you believe, then you miss this point we're trying to make about Jesus and His love. You believe those things as a fact that they happen. And you're glad He did that. Yes. Or do you believe that with a life-changing faith? Do you believe enough to let Jesus change your life, your mind, your heart, your relationship by teaching you how to love? Repentance means I can't go on living like I have been living since I have come to understand what God has done for me. I want to die to Christ. I want to be resurrected with Him. I do that by being baptized. I want my old existence to die and be buried with Jesus. I am resurrected in Him because I don't ever want to be who I was. So begin a new existence. Has Jesus' death and resurrection changed your life? If you really believe it, you can never be the same because God's love has touched your life. The only thing you have to give to God is your sin. Joyfully take His forgiveness. Now, how do we be saved? What must I do to be saved? The Bible reveals to us to, that faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Jesus said, I told you, you would die in your sins, for unless you believe that I am He, you will die in your sins. We've already talked about repentance. How repentance means I can't go on living my life as I have lived. Peter told him on Pentecost, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Then we're to be like the Ethiopian eunuch and confess, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. We confess Him unto salvation. Be baptized. Baptism which also does now save us, not the putting away the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. Then remain faithful to the end. We're to continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting away from the hope of the gospel. We're to be faithful unto death, and He will give us the crown of life. The one who endures to the end will be saved.